Welcome to Culture Critic. I'm back today with my friend Daniel Carowin, and today we're going to be talking about veganism. So I've been a vegan for about a year now, and I've been a vegetarian for about four years now, something like that. I can't keep track of it, but uh, Daniel's kind of a more recent vegan. Um, how long has it been now? A uh, few months. Two okay. months. A few months now, but, but even before that, the only thing you were eating at all would be fish, right? Fish mainly, yeah. You, didn't, you never really ate cheese or dairy anyway. No. A whole lot. So... Today I want to talk about veganism and, and really talk to people out there who are not vegan. I think this is a really interesting topic, obviously. Um, a lot of interesting podcasters like Sam Harris have talked about this. And they kind of it's kind of funny listening to Sam Harris talk about it because he kind of acknowledges that um, he knows it's morally wrong to eat animals and that, that it's bad and that it will be looked back upon in 50 or 100 years um, in a similar way to slavery. But he just likes meat and it makes him feel good and whatever. Um, so I want to talk about that subject right there a little bit first and talk about where do you think veganism is going to be in 20, 50, 100 years? Whew, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a very good question because, uh, you know, social commentators have tried to predict the future and it's, it's, it's quite difficult. But I think a lot of more people are coming around to it as, as this movement grows and, you know, you're spearheading part of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are becoming more aware of what's going on with animals mm -hmm. and uh, how they can help out, how they can give back and uh, just make a difference and do the right thing. Yeah, I definitely think that's a that's a key thing. I had this discussion with a friend the other day about veganism and where it will go, whether it's going to be a social change or maybe legislative change. And I think that's the interesting thing to figure out is um, what's going to be the catalyst here to, to movement? Because obviously we have uh, vegan populations growing pretty fast. A lot of people are, are going vegan now. And some people are doing it purely for environment. Some people are doing it for the animals. Some people are doing it for themselves because it's better for you. A lot of different issues. So what is going to be the final kind of catalyst? And I, I think what really what's going to end up happening is going to be a lot like the anti-smoking campaign, right? If we're going to, at some point, I think roughly in about 10 to 20 years, we're going to have kind of a big push. There's going to be a legislative and social awareness type of push that's going to finally kind of take hold. And what's going to happen essentially is that generation will keep doing the same old crap, just like the smokers did. But then the generation after that will be like ours with smoking now where it's so hard to find like a 15 year old that wants to smoke. I mean, it's, it's rare now. Mm -hmm. Whereas obviously when I was growing up 15, 20 years ago, almost everybody smoked. It's just, it's just a matter of you got to get that next generation out there um, where there's such a stigma against it that you don't want to do anymore. Yeah. No, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, the social versus legislative changes and generational gaps that we have that we experience. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely that the next generation, preceding generations are going to be more thoughtful about it mm -hmm. and they're going to move more towards veganism. Right. I'm not so sure about the legislative uh, changes, at least not in the short term, in the immediate mm -hmm. future. I think that is going to be well down the road because we are so averse in this country yeah. to legislating certain things, and for good reason, but I think in this case, you're right. I mean, it is comparable to smoking in terms of the overall moral good, mm -hmm. the overall health benefits that mm -hmm. we can accrue from that. I just think when it comes to something like meat, um, we're talking about something that a lot of people could still consider as like part of the American tradition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's embedded in our culture. Cigarettes, you know, they were only around for what, 100 years or whatever. At least right. that was the popular consciousness of it. So I'm not sure if legislative change will occur in the short term, mm -hmm. in the short term but I certainly think that the upcoming generations are becoming more aware of it and moving towards that as options also become available within the grocery stores around us to mm -hmm. do so. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it too is what's in the stores and what's available. I think for a certain generation, our generation, we're like in the upper age of millennials, but younger millennials, you know, they're eating a lot more like this kind of like fake meat and tofu and stuff like that. Not, in, not even if they're vegan, just because they want to try this stuff. And I think a lot of them are finding, oh, it tastes just as good or better or whatever. So why would I go back and eat meat if it's having to do all this damage to the earth and to animals and all that good stuff? So, um, but I think the biggest difference is going to be on the legislative side. I think Europe will be way ahead of us, as they always are, for the most part. Actually, a recent story came out that the EU Parliament sat down and they all watched Cowspiracy. And about half of them voted, or not voted, I don't know what they did exactly, I didn't really look into it too much, but they basically made a pledge to try to lead uh, Europe towards veganism. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that. I don't know if it's going to be through any kind of high taxation on animal products or whether that's going to be through any kind of actually legal routes. I'm not sure what they're going to do yet. I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow. But the fact that I think if you've got intelligent people, which I think most legislators generally are fairly intelligent people, um, certainly they're not 
like, I mean, for example, our congressman in the United States, I think half of them probably can't spell their own name. But at the same time, you do have another half of them or so that are probably pretty, mm -hmm. pretty intelligent people. Mm -hmm. Now, again, all we have to do is basically convince a certain amount of the country, let's say 40, 50 percent at the most, to make these changes. We got 30 percent of the country right now that they're not going to change anything. So we can call these people like Trump voters or you can call them Republicans. I don't care what you want to call them, but they're not going to change anything. They're not going to ever give up their guns, their religion. They're not going to give up their meat and they don't want to give up their country to anybody who's not a white Christian, basically. Right. That's basically the, the group we're talking about. But so the good news is we don't have to convince them. Right. We didn't have to convince those people that slavery was bad. We, don't, we didn't have to convince them that women deserve the right to vote. We don't have to convince that 30% of the country. They are irrelevant people. Now, they may sway a national election, election, but on actual social issues, whether it's legalizing pot, whether it's gay marriage, they're irrelevant people. They can live in the past, and that's going to be the rest of their life, and they're just going to cling to their guns and religion, like Obama once said and then took it back. But uh, I think he was on to something there. Definitely, definitely. And I think it's uh, like you talked about before, when the, when science begins to show more and more and more the links between meat consumption and cancer and all kinds of other diseases, that is going to mirror potentially the uh, legislative side, just like tobacco, mm -hmm. when all that research starts showing cancer links yeah. and everything and, and legislation started coming out that was basically um, making it harder for tobacco to lie yeah. and uh, basically putting them out of business in some ways anyways. So yeah, that's a good point. That, that you know, more so than the environment, more so than the animals, you know, serving your own self-interest, your own health, will probably be the biggest catalyst to fixing or to um, getting rid of this problem we have with animals right now. Definitely. I mean, you know, we're, we're pragmatists, and most, unfortunately, most people, it seems, and to, to me, are not going to respond to mm -hmm. the, the theoretical uh, notion of... Um, how a cow, how eating a cow is going to affect the environment. They don't make that linkage for the most right. part. Well, but, I mean, half the country literally doesn't believe in climate change. Exactly. So exactly. that's not, the environment's going to be the hardest push for them. Now, obviously, hopefully, this next generation growing up, they obviously care about the environment far more than our generation mm -hmm. did. And it'll kind of keep going from there because they want to, again, that might not even be out of any kind of greater good. That's just more like survival. Yeah. Like you don't want to live on a planet that's warming at a rate that is unlivable in 100 years or 200 years. Now, ideally, they would be uh, it'd be more of a of a holistic interest as opposed to just mm -hmm. a self interest. But you know what? What? However, we get we can get whatever there. it takes. Yeah, right? whatever it takes. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because I really don't love talking to other vegans out there who are doing it for their health alone. Just because I feel like there's, I feel like that's a really selfish way to live. I mean, I think you know, in general, you should always be thinking about others and other creatures and other things and other ways you can help the world, not necessarily how you can help yourself. But if that's what it takes, if most people, which I think is fairly true, most people really do just care about their lives, their family, the people that matter to them, well, obviously, um, direct links to cancer, direct links to heart disease might help them just get off, you know, turn into a vegan or turn into at least a vegetarian or whatever, simply for their own, you know, self-interest. Definitely. I mean, you see so many conservatives, and I don't like to blanket anyone into a category, but I mean, it's true in our experience that you see a conservative who really only cares about themselves, their little in-group like we were talking about, mm -hmm. but then something happens to somebody in their family, right, right. and then all of a sudden they become a warrior for this cause. Right, like you gay know, marriage. Yeah, exactly, like gay marriage, but every other cause, liberal, progressive cause, they don't care about, right. or they're totally against. Yeah. So, you know, something happens like that. So I think that's what we're going to see more and more of that, because the studies have become they're pretty clear about the linkages between cancer right. and other diseases. Well, especially especially heart disease. I mean, the the only the only you know cause of heart disease is atherosclerosis. The only cause of atherosclerosis would be heavy saturated fats. The only heavy saturated fats in the world basically come from meat and cheese. Um, you get some from oils and stuff like that. But how much oil is someone consuming in a day? I mean, how, who's like no one's taking shots of canola oil, right? This is not this is not happening. So that's definitely a good point. And again, you got to hopefully. I mean, I don't want to say hopefully that someone's affected by it so it makes a change, but unfortunately that's just the way that it has to happen sometimes. Like you said, with gay marriage is the best example I always say out there. What does every Republican congressman that voted for gay marriage have in common? Uh, they have a gay child. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it goes, it literally lines up directly with, I have a gay child, I support gay marriage. I don't know anybody who's gay, I hate gay marriage. It's evil, it's the devil, it's going to bring down the world, yep. right? Oh, my daughter's gay? Oh, gay marriage is fantastic. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it at all. What's the problem? Yeah. Right? It's, it flipped like a switch like that. So, again, I don't want to say hopefully their son or their father dies from heart disease. Obviously, that's not what I want. But over time, I mean, first of all, that is what's happening, right? Like, heart disease is the number one killer in America. Heart disease is most likely caused most of the time due to meat and dairy consumption. So I don't have to really hope for it. It's just, it's just the reality of what's happening. The question is, 
you know, the hope is that they will, there'll be so much overwhelming science that they will make a direct link to it. It will make a direct connection and it may cause some kind of change. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty skeptical about human nature and uh, folks yeah. in this country, so I would like to think that too. Yeah. But uh, keep in mind, I don't mean 10 years. We're right, talk, right. We're talking, uh, I, I, I believe veganism will basically be the norm in about 50 years, maybe even 60 years. I mean, it's going to mm. be a long time. Yeah. But I think, I think before our lifetime ends, maybe when we're like 90, we'll live that long, um, I do think in 60 or 70 years that pretty much veganism will be the only way. I, I think there will be, we'll, we'll reach a point where it's basically illegal or such a high tax, such a luxury thing to eat an animal that it will basically be extinct. Yeah, and that's a good point about climate change and the effects it's going to have on ecologies and where animals can actually feed and the water usage and mm -hmm. everything. We're already having water wars and water right. shortages across the country. Right. Or at least across and the Nothing West uses West. more water than, than the meat industry. Exactly. Not even close. So, and that's also where legislation might come into play right there. I mean, if you don't have any water, are you going to use a less intensive water mm -hmm. resource, what water food source? Or right. Food source that uses water, you're going to use meat, which uses right, a lot right. more water. Well, and not to mention, I mean, that's the other the thing that's so frustrating about this conversation when you talk to people. I mean, you talk to people who are like somewhat, they claim to be like humanitarians. Not only they they claim to care about animals, which is hilarious, but they also claim to care about the world and, and poor children or whatever. And it's just shocking because they, if you just put them, sit them down and, and kind of educate them on how much good can be done with the amount of money we spend on meat. I mean, if you took every dollar we spent on meat and you get like a little burger or a little chicken breast, you can literally get enough rice to feed someone for a month or one little chicken patty, you know? We could feed the world easily with the same amount of money we spend right now. You just don't eat meat. I mean, it fixes, it literally fixes itself right away if we chose to divert funds into a situation like that. That's obviously not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, maybe it won't ever happen again. It's hard enough to get people in any country to care about anyone outside of their country. I mean, it's just, that's a very difficult task. It is, it is. But as, as we start to face more global problems, we're going to have to come together to solve mm -hmm. this problems. And I think eventually uh, that will happen. And that this whole food issue of veganism versus meat consumption is going to play into that eventually. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we are going to be able to work together and we are going to come out with the better moral solution, which is veganism. Yeah, I definitely, I, I think we will get there. Just it'll take a certain amount of time. We'll see, right? Yeah. Hopefully a lot of you guys out there are watching this that are not vegan. And maybe you're just curious about it. You're interested in it. And you want to kind of get some ideas about it. Um, I want to talk about a couple of different key points here that people ask me all the time about veganism that I can help you maybe clear up a little bit. One of the things, of course, is the cost of it. So this is a common misconception that it's more expensive. You know, just keep in mind, guys, if you're eating a healthy vegan diet and you're not living on 100% like greens and, and berries that are kind of expensive, if you're eating beans and sweet potatoes and all kinds of other like carrots, all kinds of other you know heavy starchy, starch foods or a lot of lentils and beans that are more protein packed, it's incredibly cheap. I mean, I spend significantly less money every week on my food than what I did when I eat meat. Uh, it's, not, it's probably about half as much. It's a huge, huge difference. Definitely. I mean, your all your videos, uh, a lot of your videos have pointed out the cost savings that you can achieve if mm -hmm. you actually do veganism right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not that difficult. You know, watch your videos, go to other, other websites, go to other resources, you right. know, go to your Kroger's, whoever. Yeah. But there are definitely resources out there for you to achieve veganism uh, in a cost-efficient way. Yeah, on a really good budget. Um, you can, I think you could easily spend about $40 or $50 a week and, and have a very good, well-balanced vegan diet. And that's, that's not even that hard to do. I spend about 75 bucks a week and I'm eating like a ton of food compared to most people. Probably twice as many calories as the average human needs to consume. I was going to say, and obviously the flavorings and just the way you can make it, make it very flavorful, make yeah. it very tasteful. And that's something I think folks who don't know much about veganism, they just assume that it's going to be this like terrible tasting food, but right. it's healthy for them. But obviously there's so much you can do with it to make mm -hmm. it really good. In fact, better than a lot of these other yeah, like, meat-based foods. Why? Yeah, people ask me all the time, like, oh, ooh, what's vegan cheese? And I always ask them, well, what's regular cheese? And they can't ever tell me, like, well, I'm not really sure how it's made. Like, yeah, no shit, you don't know how it's made. I mean, but you're going to judge the vegan cheese. So if you just try this stuff, if you're open-minded enough to just give it a shot, maybe you won't like all of them. I mean, I've tried, like, for example, maybe 30 different vegan cheeses. Probably 10 of them are really good. 20 of them are not that great. But there are ones out there that are great. It's just like, it's no different than you go to a restaurant. How many times you go to a restaurant and you leave there and you're not, it wasn't that great. It happens all the time. And you ate meat or whatever. Not everything's going to be perfect, but you find your brands, you find the things that you like. You try stuff like 
you know, you find certain brands. Like for me, it's Beyond Meat. They, their, their, their chicken breasts are phenomenal. Their, their uh, burgers are insane. You could totally trick someone with those. They, they taste just like beef. Um, they have all kinds of stuff like that. They're, some, they have like a taco beef crumble, stuff like that, that absolutely can easily replace what you eat now. And they're a little bit expensive compared to meat because there's just not as much demand for them. I mean, literally probably one one millionth of the demand for the Beyond Meat burgers versus a normal ground beef burger. So as they get more popular, you know, that $5 bag of ground beef, ground beef, um, that'll probably go down to like $3 in a couple of years. And all of a sudden, it's cheaper to eat it, not to mention it's better for you, better for the environment, better for the animals, all the way around. It's just a smarter solution for you. That's, that's a good point. I mean, it's just not about the upfront cost. You know, if you do care about moral moral issues, if you do care about other issues besides self-interest and just dieting, then, you know, it's the right way to go. It's just the right thing to do. The other thing I like to talk to non-vegans about is why exactly have you chosen to select certain animals that matter, dogs and cats, and then certain animals, cows and pigs and chickens, don't matter at all, right? What's the difference between these sentient beings? I mean, certainly it's not intelligence because pigs are smarter than cats and pigs are definitely smarter than dogs as well. So it's not an intelligent situation. It's just what? You don't find them cute or it's more just you. that's how you were raised. So that's what you do, right? So when you want to take your kid to go get food and you go see how food is made, you take it to like an apple orchard, right? You don't take your child to a slaughterhouse. That's not what you do. Right, you would never, you would never do that in a million years because you're probably, you know, it, it's it, it'll freak them out and you're ashamed of it or whatever. But why is it that these animals deserve this, and other animals don't, and other any other sentient beings don't? Why, why don't we just start killing dumb children for their meat? The line at this point is a random, arbitrary line of, well, this is what we've been doing for a couple thousand years, so we can keep doing it. Right. Right. It's just it's that notion that we don't question. It's the things that we just growing up with that we don't really see the fundamental reasons for. But when we start looking at it, we, we really see there's really no basis for what we do. Right. There's really good reason, very good reasons to switch over to veganism relative to just eating these animals, killing these animals, mm-hmm. which is very arbitrary. Mm-hmm. And that's not right. That doesn't fit the ideals that we propose to live by, at least in this country and really across the advanced Western countries themselves, because... Mm-hmm. We do value human life, and we do value other sentient life, but yet we have this contradiction within our society that we don't address right. on a consistent basis. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's just it, it, it doesn't make any logical sense if you try to align it with our other values in the world. It just makes no sense, right? So um, I think Gandhi said something great. He said, you know, you can, you can judge the, the quality of a country by the way it treats animals, and obviously we would be failing uh, that test pretty, pretty poorly. Not that most other countries are better. I mean... A lot of uh, European countries are better than us in the sense that they treat the animals a lot better. Some of their standards are significantly better than ours. But it's not like they have an aversion to eating the meat or to killing the animal in general. They just have much more humane practices of keeping the animal alive. Um, there's no, it's not more humane the way they kill them because that's, that's a ridiculous, uh, it's a paradox, right? There's no, you can't humanely kill something. That's insane, right? You can't humanely murder something. But they do humanely raise these animals um, a little bit better than we do. Most definitely. Like you said in a prior video, um, the EU tends to do things a lot more progressively, a lot more uh, rationally than we do here in the U.S. For some reason, we have an aversion to doing things the commonsensical way, common sense, um, just, the, just the right way. I mean, we all know, uh, a lot of us know what the right thing is to do in this mm-hmm. case. We all, we've all had animals, we've all had pets before, and what would happen if our dog was slaughtered? What would happen right. if our cat is slaughtered? How we feel, right. like you were saying before about the distinction. That's arbitrary. There and not is, only... Not, not to cut you off, but not only I want to say not only slaughtered, but what if you found out that your dog was basically tortured for the, for ten years of its life before it was slaughtered? I mean, that would you, you know that would kill you, right? I mean, right. you'd be so upset about it. You would want to go kill whoever did that to you. So that's the bigger thing here is not only obviously turning to veganism and stopping in general, but why do they you know why do we do we allow the, the the suffering of the animals in the meantime so much? I mean. The chickens and the cows and the pigs, and they're living these horrendously terrible lives. A lot of these chickens never have never seen the never seen the sun before. I mean, they're born, they stay in this cage in a completely enclosed uh, barn or whatever you want to call it, and they, they never see the light of day, and and they can't even move, they can't even turn around. I mean, you just imagine what it would be like if you were born, or if you put your dog in a crate where it literally couldn't move around, couldn't even turn its body an inch or two, and it stayed like that for a couple of years. You just imagine how unbelievably cruel that is and how bad you would feel for your dog. Why would you not feel that way for that chicken or you know, a pig or cow? 
That's right. That's right. I mean, there, there really is no sound basis for making those, drawing those lines between, okay, we can slaughter this, right. but we can't slaughter that. We can torture this, but we can't torture that. Yeah. It's just special interest. It's the way we were raised. It's, it's a whole bunch of other social cultural factors that we just don't question, that we haven't questioned until mm -hmm. quite recently. Yeah. So yeah, I don't want to beat you guys over the head with guilt about the animal part. There's obviously so much more to this. Um, I'll definitely make another video in the future and cover some of the health benefits, some of the more important uh, environmental benefits, and why this is such a, an urgent thing. But more than anything, I just want to kind of start a discussion with you guys. Please leave some comments down below if you are not sure if you want to go vegan, if you have any questions about it, if you need some information about anything. Let me know down in the comment section. If you are a proud vegan or vegetarian or whatever, um, definitely leave some comments down below. I definitely want your support. And let us know, you know, what kind of videos you want to see in the future. And we'll definitely come back and talk about veganism and some other topics in the future. And thanks for watching Culture Critic.